Hello world, this is part one of me building a trivia bot using Google's custom search API. Um, but first, welcome to the 129th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Uh, my digital assistant can do a simple web search and it actually does that when it can't find a, an explicit instruction to do something else. So let me show you an example of that now. Shane. How can I help you? What is the Dow Jones? Here is what I found. Okay, and now it's going to pull up just a Google search of what is the Dow Jones. Now I can have Shane read this top part which is fine for this scenario, but sometimes you'll need something a little more intuitive. And um, so, and so, if you want to see uh, more of what Shane can do, uh, take a look at this video by clicking the card here, or, or and I'll leave a description or a link for that video in the description below. So, um, so we can have Shane read this snippet, but. What happens if we need something a little more intuitive? For example, um, what about trivia questions, right? That those aren't easily Googled, right? By nature, that's how trivia questions are um, created, is to make sure you just can't Google it. But usually they give you options, right? And this became a worldwide phenomenon with the app called HQ Trivia. And basically, uh, everybody in the world competed against each other on a very quick timer. And so um, those are examples of intuitive searches. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use Google's custom search API to do that. So in part one, we're just going to set up the Google search API and show how it works. And then in a next video, we will um, clean up the question to make it more uh, make the search quicker and then we'll also assign probabilities to each of the options but for now we'll just use a Google search so I found a question right here that uh, is from the headquarters trivia uh, database you can just Google that and it says the program to revisit the moon in 2024 is named for what Greek goddess now what you would have to do to use the simple Google search is just say you'd have to change this string around to say what is the program to revisit the 2024 um, what which Greek goddess is the program to revisit the moon in 2024 and, and that's kind of complicated when you do string analysis and this is a very easy question right and so it will get more complicated so what we want to do is try to minimize how much string analysis we have to do so we don't have to try to encapsulate every single possibility so what we're going to do is let's run this real quick um, so again the program to visit visit the moon in 2024 is named for what Greek goddess and so what's going to happen is I'm going to run this and we're going to input the trivia question and then I've already put in one of the terms up here so Phoebe right here now in the future we're going to um, ask for the input and we could just copy and paste all three options so let's run this real quick so type your trivia question so the program to revisit the moon and now when I press enter it's going to search trying to find things with Phoebe in it okay so it says the Google search didn't work so now let's try Artemis and now we get a bunch of or we get two options right here so what we're going to do and let's try Persephone see if we get anything Persephone spelling while recording Persephone and now let's see if we get anything so type our Google 
So it found one item. All right. So we found two items with Artemis, one with Persephone, and zero with Phoebe. So on this example, we would assign a higher probability to Artemis. And the answer is Artemis. So what we need to do is probably clean this up and then assign probabilities. But we'll do that in the next video. So that's the Google search engine. Basically, you have the option of searching for OR terms, which is what we'll use, or exact terms if you need to refine it. And then it searches everything, news, uh, Yahoo, or Google Finance. So it does a comprehensive search using your specific terms versus a generic Google search. So now let's go through the code. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip some of this because I've already started working on cleaning the code. So um, first we're going to import requests. All right, this is part of me cleaning the question. So let's skip that. So import requests. And then we're going to do a Google search. So you can take out the function if that's all you want to do is do a Google search. And so you'll need two things before you do this. You'll need a Google API key and you'll need a search engine CX key. Now, it's not really a CX key. It's just that's what the documentation names it. So that's what the Google search shows. So for the first one, you'll need this. Um, you can go to the Google Developers Console and go to the API library. And then you can either search here, so custom search. And that's not it, but I do know that it's uh, near the bottom. So here is all of your options. But here is the custom search API. So you click on that. Now, I've already did it, but you can do enable this API, right? So you, if yours says click to enable this API, all right, then you can do that. But what you'll need to do is go to, uh, oops, oops, don't, don't click it a bunch of times like I do. I always do that. So let's go home. Go home to your dashboard. There we go. So what I did was I went to this hamburger icon and I went to APIs and services. And then you'll go to credentials. And then you will, yours should be empty here, and you'll click create new API key, right? Create credentials up here, and you'll get an API key, which will be here. Now, mine is blurred out, but you should have a copy API key. And then you do right here, key equals, and then copy and paste it as a string. Next, you'll need your search engine ID. And what this is, when you go to uh, just Google custom search engine CX key, all right, and then print, then you go here. So for me, it was the third option. You go to search engine ID, programmable search engine help. Then you go to this custom search homepage, which will take you here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to add, and it's just going to ask you a simple question. Which search engine do you want to use? I want to use Google. You have to use Google for the Google API search to work. And that will give you this CX key. So copy and paste that as a string. Next, you can either um, type this in yourself as a string or pass it like we did. So Q equals new question. So how we got that was I just did something simple as in trivia question equals input. Type your trivia question. And then we copy and pasted it. And then I made it lowercase. Then we pass it to our function called Google search. But you can change all that. You can delete that, make this not a function, and just pass it like this. So we pass the question in a string. OK, then you'll need the base URL. 
So this is the newest one, customsearch.googleapis.com, custom search version one. But you may see some tutorials, older ones, that have this, Google APIs, custom search version one, and it still works. But I always like to use the newest URL in the documentation. Then you need to pass a bunch of parameters. So um, Q is the question. So per, this is key and values. So Q equals question, which is what we defined here. CX is the CX key that we got, the programmable search engine key. Key is the API key. Or terms, now you have an option. You can use or terms or exact terms. So or terms means if I had Persephone and Phoebe, two different ones, it would search for both of those. If I used exact terms, it would find Persephone space Phoebe. So there are some trivia questions where we're going to have to use those and assign probabilities. And then the next is filter one. And you have to check the documentation. Uh, I forgot what that filter one is. But there's filter zero and filter one are two options. Okay, then we're going to do a page equals requests. And that's why we imported requests. Dot request. Then you're going to do get, all caps, the URL, which is this new URL here, and then you're going to pass it the parameters. So params equals parameters. Then we're going to get the results equals json.loads page.text. And I forgot to say import json up here. And we'll need that when we start cleaning the questions as well. Okay, then we're going to uh, try and accept. So for each item in the results, then we want to look in items, right? We're parsing a JSON. We're going to print the snippet of each item, all right? So in the results, there's a key called items. And so for each item in that key, we want to print the snippet, which is another value of the item key. So this is the key. This is the value. So for each of these in the values, we want to print this key in this value, the value of this key. So if, if you're not familiar with JSON, I'm, I'm not a tutorial page, but that's how you do it. If the Google doesn't have anything, it'll pass a key error. And we want to catch that, right, with this try and accept. So accept a key error, and then I printed out the Google search didn't work, which you saw when we passed Phoebe. And that's pretty much it. You, that's all you need to run your own Google search. So like I said, you can take out this function and just use this code right here from key on down to here. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe so you can watch me build part two of this video where we assign probabilities to each of the answers. And then I hope you subscribe to my channel if you just want to see me continue building my own digital assistant named Shane. Please like this video and leave a comment um, if you're working on something similar. All right, thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.